Okay, so here we are, we've got a flow. Now don't worry about what this flow does. It's been specifically built because I know it's going to cause an error. And we're gonna look at how we handle those errors. Now, if I do a test on this one, trigger the action, we're gonna find as expected that we've got test failed. And when we look into this one, we're going to see that actually my pass JSON step failed. Now this is kind of annoying, uh, but this could happen, you know, perhaps you're trying to validate some content, uh, perhaps you're trying to call to some external system. Anyway, errors happen. Uh, this isn't very satisfactory because my flow is failed and I have to kind of dig in. It's not what I want. So we're going to introduce some basic error handling. Going back to the edit view then, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a pattern which is actually very common in programming. I know this isn't programming because we're dragging and dropping things, but concepts are still useful. So we're going to implement this thing called try catch finally. Try is the thing which you want to do. Catch means if there's any sort of error, then do something with that error. And then finally perform some sort of action regardless of whether an error happens or not. And we're going to do that using a thing called scopes. So the first thing I do is I'm going to add three scopes, one for try, catch, and finally, into my flow here. So what I'm going to do is new step, search for scope. There we go. And I'm going to add three of those. Okay, I have th my three scopes. Now I'm just going to rename them so that it's clear what we're doing. Rename, try. Rename, catch, and finally. There we go. Now to make this work as I want it to work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this scope is going to be called, this is configure run after, if there is an error. I could also do uh, timed out. In fact, hey, let's do that too, because it's a kind of error. And then for finally, I want this to run after, regardless of what happens above. So there we go. I have my try, do the thing, catch any sort of errors, and then finally. Now for my try, I'm just going to drag the thing which I'm worried my error inside it. There we go. I have that now. And then I'm going to do things in catch. I'm going to do things in finally. Now. I want to know if an error has occurred in this step. So what I'm going to do is before we go into this thing, I'm going to initialize a variable. And what this is going to do is tell me if an error has occurred. Is error condition and by default, we're going to set this to false because we are optimistic and we hope there won't be an error. Here we go. Okay, now if there is an error in the try, passing this JSON, then I want to catch that. And the thing I want to do is to say, set variable. And if there was an error, I'm going to set my is error condition to be true. Perfect. And then for my finally, in this example, all I want to do is tell the person clearly whether this failed or not. So let's do that. Obviously, I could really go to town on this one. So we're going to set a condition and we're going to say if error condition is equal to true and that means there was an error. 
and let's just do a notification because that's nice and easy for the example. Send me a mobile notification and just say the action failed. Obviously we could do more. We could drag in uh, variables from the above. Hey, actually, you know what? I've got these usernames. Let's do it. The action failed for user space there. Okay, good stuff. And if we didn't get an error, then we're going to send a mobile notification to say success. Perfect. Okay, so we save that one. And let's give that a run. Test, perform trigger action. Successful. Now I did get the error that I was expecting in my try, but my catch set the variable and my finally set the condition correctly here. And so it said, yes, there has been an error. It didn't go to the one which would be for success. So I've got my mobile notification and that's it.